A new day may be dawning over the mountains of Haiti. It is time for a new start for the Haitian people. The cities are as busy as they've always been with the daily business of survival. But now the people, from the adults to the children, have found hope. It came with the end of the brutal military regime and the lifting of the economic embargo against Haiti in October of 1994. The people understand the economic struggle, the conditions of poverty. The differences between those who have little and those who have wealth will not be easy to overcome. The people of Haiti just want the chance to change, to work, to be healthy, and for the children to learn. They know the world will be difficult from time to time, but with the help of plan, they will overcome the obstacles. Their new hope is born of faith that the future will be kind to them and that the future of the children will be secured and that every one of the Haitian people will have a new sense of freedom that will allow them to flourish. President Jean Bertrand Aristide set the tone when he returned by saying, Haiti has seen a new day and on this day all of the sons and daughters of the nation join hands with the hope of attaining true reconciliation. In Haiti and around the world, the plan staff helps more than 700,000 poor families in over 30 developing countries achieve their hopes of education, good health, and a secure future for their children. The work plan does is supported by the donations of sponsors in Europe, Japan, Australia, and North America including the United States, where it is known as Child Reach. In Haiti, over 50,000 families are affiliated with PLAN. The field offices are located in Croix de Bouquet, Jacmel, Cap Haitien, and the capital, Port-au-Prince. Port-au-Prince is Haiti's largest city, with a population of about 2 million people. Many of the poorest live in an area on the waterfront called Cité Soleil. This is where PLAN is working very hard to help over 9,000 families with education, nutrition, and medical programs. For mothers like Annalise Delmo, just keeping her family fed during the embargo was a challenge. But she says things are getting better. Annalise and her family benefit from the work of PLAN. Life was very difficult during the embargo. I had to sell everything to get food for the children. But now, because it has been lifted, I heard my husband is going to work and help me take care of the children. Everything has been changing, and I would like to change too. I would like a better life. Look at the way I'm living. My area is very dirty. Plan has done a lot for me. They let me money to start a business. I had to pay it back, that's true. But that helped me a lot with the children. They are giving me material to repair my house. And also, they pay school fees for Natasha, my oldest daughter. My name is Natasha Siptam. I'm 15 years old. I go to school and I'm in the eighth grade. During the three years, it's been very, very rough and uncomfortable. I couldn't dress right, I couldn't eat right. I went sometimes three days without eating, but now it is different. We still have problems. The situation around here is very bad. I would like to be a nurse in case someone gets sick or something so I could care for them. I want to be the first one to have a real career to help my mom and my brothers and my sisters. Plan has helped me a lot, especially with school fees. Now I can write a letter and write my name. Without Plan, there would be no one to help me now. Kids whose parents are living in these conditions must do something for their parents. And I think that I will try hard, work hard at school. By learning, even though I might not be a nurse, I will have a job, so I will be able to help. The Cité Soleil schools are given tens of thousands of dollars a year by plan. In Natasha's school, there are 72 foster children. Many of them would not be in school if it weren't for the fees, uniforms, and school supplies provided by plan. Headmaster Jean-Claude Felix says he has seen real improvement. 
Without plans assistance, children would not be able to go to school, and parents would not be able to send them. If we have a 60% literacy rate here in Cité Soleil, it is because of plans involvement in education. Education is seen as the avenue out of poverty in places like Cité Soleil and PLAN encourages parents to get involved. Most of the stories parents tell are of a hope that the lives of the young people will be better than their lives have been. Marie Kawalanui is concerned about her future and the kind of life her daughter will have when she grows up. Jessica is a foster child. The two of them work very hard each day on Jessica's schoolwork so she can fulfill a dream Marie has for her only child. I am very sick. I am anemic. And I would like for her to become a doctor. I enjoy studying with my daughter. The writing on the walls are the questions they give her at school. We write them on the wall because I don't have a blackboard to work with. And she writes the answers on the floor. And then, after we finish, we erase it and we do this every day. There is only one prayer that I write on the wall and we recite it every day. I pray to God for life, hope, and health. In fact, a variety of health services covering all ages are available to the 9,000 planned families in Cité Soleil. Care is provided through several facilities operated by the Haitian Center for Development and Health. St. Catherine's Maternity Ward is one of the facilities supported through child sponsorship. It is a major reason why mothers and newborns have a better chance of preventing birth-related diseases and surviving. The Maternity Ward Director is Dr. Majik Kodbi. He says the support by PLAN has made a significant difference. It's very important to us because before about 80% of patients delivered out of, city, out of this hospital. Now it's the reverse. We have 80% of the patients of Cité Soleil delivered here and 20% delivered out of Cité Soleil or in the, the house. And how has that affected the mortality rate? It's really very, very low. The children suffered greatly during the embargo because of the high cost of food and short supplies of some medicines. But the Center for Development and Health Clinic, otherwise known as CDS, is seeing up to 200 children a day in Cité Soleil. It is also supported through sponsored donations. The children range in age from birth to five years old. Doctors and nurses are working on the effects of malnutrition with regular doses of vitamin A. The staff has an immunization program to prevent childhood diseases and they are constantly checking the growth of the babies with a weight monitoring program. Sewing classes for mothers are held at the pediatric clinic. They were established to help motivate them to stay in regular contact with the Center for Development and Health doctors during the most vulnerable months of the baby's young life. Over 1,000 Cité Soleil families visit the nearby Chapi Medical Center for outpatient treatment each month. The medical center provides everything from dental and eye service to relief from skin disease, high blood pressure, typhoid, and malaria. Children can get emergency treatment as well. A pharmacy in the medical center provides easy access to a variety of drugs and remedies. We'd like to encourage the sponsors to continue their support. Planned families have a clear advantage over other families. For example, if a planned family comes here and I don't have the medicine, they can go to anywhere in the city to get it and plan will pay. Quare Bouquet is a rural community about 30 minutes from Port-au-Prince where farmers and other vendors gather at the street market to sell and buy goods. From this office, Plan works with about 10,000 foster families to help them improve their lives. Not far from here in the country, Plan has a special partnership with a local institution. The Health Education Learning Resource Project, HELP, began providing health care to the people of the area in 1992. Plan paid the full cost of the program the first two years. After that, in the third and fourth years, HELP will pay an increasing amount and by the fifth year it will be on its own. 
A major effort here is the prevention of childhood diseases such as acute respiratory infections, diarrhea, and malnutrition. Under Dr. Michel Brutus, the facility has been serving hundreds of men, women, and children. Given the, the crisis we went through and we are still going through, HELP has been able to achieve a lot of goals. The statistics show that uh, here in the area of Kwadebuke, we are the only maternity to provide uh, complete care to a patient who comes. First of all, you have an opportunity to follow the mother while she's pregnant and teach her to best nourish herself. So from the, the very first time or first moment of the pregnancy, we are having a kind of monitoring of, of the child. Once the, the baby is born, we have an opportunity to immunize right away the baby. So for the first six months, if a mother breastfeed a, a child, we have 90% of chance that this child will not have diarrhea and this child will be strong enough to fight other illnesses. We have a specific program called the uh, Child Survival Program. We immunize children from zero to five years, especially. Our nutrition department is uh, functioning, I can say, very well. The difference resides in the cases of malnutrition. Because the very first year we had more cases of malnutrition than the second year. So in addition to the children, the mothers come here and also receive uh, food. So uh, I believe that is working. I can say proudly that it is very, 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 very uh, excellent program. Moi je vais à l'école chanter dans ce parandol. For many, like Martinette Toussaint and her eight-year-old daughter Marie. Plan's sponsor-funded Food for Work program was a vital lifeline during the economic chaos of the embargo years. I had a little business selling material, but because of the embargo, the money ran out. So, I work in the Food for Work program, cleaning gutters, which paid the schooling for my child. I had some debts, I took care of that. The Food for Work program was started as an emergency program, an emergency program which started at the time when the embargo situation got really worse. There was no, no employment here, the factories were all closed down, so we had to address the needs of these communities over here. We found that we could not do the regular programs as planned. We had programs like road repair, cleaning the drainages, irrigation type of programs. A lot of them have been helped in terms of getting food, in terms of getting sustenance. Their families have been helped, their children have been helped, and they have been able to pay for basic services. Gerda Mark is 27 years old with two children. Her days on the Food for Work project were very important to keep her family going. She takes the money she receives directly to the market where she buys what she can. The money is really not so much. So, it gets spent as soon as it's made. Really, it goes as fast as it comes in. Before the program, I was doing nothing. I had no work to do. I really just was doing nothing. Right now, at home, it is really helping because there is some new work. I am very happy that I found the program because it is helping my children. I truly appreciate Splen's work. For example, we had no words to get anywhere when we wanted to go to the marketplace. Now, we are working on that. I think they, they feel that Plan has helped them in their time of need. From now on, they also understand that these type of programs will have to stop and they are Community empowerment will have to continue, which we will start now. They are looking forward to a, to a better future now. Just when things were getting better, Tropical Storm Gordon hit Haiti on November 13, 1994. Hundreds died in the floods and mudslides, and thousands more lost livestock, crops, and homes. A quick response was essential. Thanks to our ability to mobilize the people and partner organizations, a special cabinet session of President Aristide's government named PLAN, the lead agency for relief and reconstruction of the Croix de Bouquet area in the days after the catastrophe. The city of Jacmel on Haiti's southern coast is home for many PLAN families. There is only one road into Jacmel and it was wiped out. This area is where Gordon struck first and hardest. Here, the need for emergency response was also great. Unfortunately, what, uh, I mean, the storm Gordon uh, blew everything, destroyed everything. And now we are obliged to go back a little bit uh, to rehabilitation of those people 
so that they can get back to the, on their feet. It's very unfortunate because the plan Jacmel has reached a point where we can now start talking about uh, sustainable development in terms of uh, an empowerment because groups have been formed, structured, and they have taken a lot of responsibility and communication and also program planning and implementation. One such group is led by my Thérèse Thubo. During the period of military rule, meetings like this were broken up by armed men. Such democratically run discussions are a new experience. Things are much better as a group because problems are brought forward and they are discussed right up to the larger meetings such as this one and things get done. Haiti's massive deforestation has hurt the land and the people who depend on it. Cutting trees from the highest mountain regions and valleys have left the communities vulnerable to erosion and landslides after every tropical storm. The trees have provided income since they are sold for construction, and much of it is burned to be sold at street markets as charcoal, which is used for cooking. Therefore, when heavy rainstorms drench Haiti, there is nothing to stop the surface water. The topsoil, which is so important for growing, is carried from the mountains to the streams and then into the rivers before it flows into the sea. Plan and the families of Jacques Mel are working together to reforest the area where the ground was eroded in agriculture was not possible. The trees are planted on the hillsides to help hold the soil together. The people won't cut down the trees anymore, but what they will do is try to maintain the trees by selling the branches, but not cutting the trees. Haitians are working on these projects so that someday the hillsides will be forested again. The trees that have survived are a living model of what the future can hold for the children of Haiti. Plan is working not only to improve their natural environment, but their living conditions as well through a large network of support. Thousands of families benefit from the effort. None of it could be accomplished without the help of foster parents throughout the world. The donor services staff in Port-au-Prince sends out nearly 80,000 letters and pictures each year from foster children in Haiti to sponsors in Europe, North America, Japan, and Australia. The communication is the most important part of plan. We really love those foster parents also to write to the FCs. We know that they are very busy, but it's always a pleasure for a family to receive a letter from the foster parent. So we really love them, even a card, whatever it is, to send to their foster children. That's really important to the families. And the messages that come out of Haiti to the rest of the world speak of hope, faith in the future, and gratitude for those who are helping. People of Haiti have uh, persevered and endured uh, through many troubles during the recent past. And with the help of some neighbors, uh, they have been able to scale the peak. The whole communication with the foster parent, foster child relationship is also to build again the relationships between the children and the foster parents. I like to read personal things about the foster parent and their children. I like to know how their children are and what their daily activities are, what kind of house they live in, and how they live. For the parents, we work in, uh, we work in terms of uplifting the whole family, but I think children are our main focus from that point of view because they will be the future of tomorrow. Mais dans la main, mais dans la main, mais dans la main.